Hello everyone and welcome to Bar TV Sports for this coverage of the Australian Defence Force Rugby Union Championships and Community Open Day. It's the first of three Community Open Days, starting off today with a double header between the Navy women and the Air Force women at 1.30 and the Navy men and Air Force men at 3.30. It's going to be a competitive game between two different branches of the Defence Force and we'll bring you the team sheets now, kick off will be underway in just a couple of minutes. But we'll start off with the teams. First off, the Navy. Uh, loose head is Carlita Telesi. Playing as hooker is Indiana Lewis. Tight head is Tara Longley. Lock is Madison Ball. The other lock is Rebecca Wilson. Uh, two flankers, Brooke Higgins and Orissa Prislak. The number eight is Christine Fine. She is the vice captain. Half back, number nine, Amy Carpenter, is a petty officer. She is the captain. Fly half is Gabby Bryan. On the left wing is Jade Delange Fakuri. Inside centre is Jenna Scheel. Outside centre is Courtney Frankel. On the right wing is Amelia Ambrose. Full back is Kayla Barlow. The reserves Alicia Conway, Chelsea Hamilton, Abby Gail Bryan. Alexandra Trevat and Taylor Stark. Now the Air Force, playing as loosehead, is leading aircraft swimmer Taylor Lemon. In hooker is Corporal Lorna Hill. Tighthead number three, Flight Lieutenant Sarah Hume. Playing as lock is Corporal Hannah Graham. Flying Officer Lucy Hidden. Number six, the flanker, aircraft swimmer Georgia Baldwin. Playing as the other flanker is leading aircraft swimmer Rachel Monaghan. Captain number eight, Sergeant Brooke Saunders. Halfback is the vice captain, leading aircraft swimmer Deanna McAvoy. Number ten, fly half, leading aircraft swimmer Haley Hutana. Playing on the right wing is aircraft swimmer Brooke Munn. Playing inside centre is Brittany Madden. Number thirteen, outside centre, is leading aircraft swimmer Brooke McHugh. At number 14 in left wing is leading aircraft swimmer Jody Torrance. And fullback is Sergeant Phoebe Hope. The reserves are Phoebe Taylor, Tiani Wakaru, Madison Moses, Alicia Bengston, Mercedes Bowers, and Maradin Luana McCann Triton. So we're just waiting for the two teams to make their way out on the pitch. This is the first of three days of the Championships and Community Day for the Australian uh, Defence Force Rugby Union. The next one will be on Wednesday the 15th of May, also at Viking Park. Uh, the, and the Army women taking on the Air Force women. And at 3.30, the Army men taking on the Air Force men. And then on Saturday, we're actually on the other side of town at Gingarlan for the Air Force women against the Australian police women, the Air Force men against the Australian policemen, the classic ADF rugby union team against the classic Wallabies and Brumbies. That should be a cracker. The Royal Military College marching band will have a presentation. There will also be the Navy women against the Army women. And then the final game will be the Navy men versus the Army men, followed by a final presentation and lots of things to do as the two teams make their way out of the pitch.
the national anthem underway. A nice moment there from both teams. The national anthem cut out halfway through, but the Navy women and the Air Force women found their singing voices and opted to go on regardless without the music. So the Navy women are in dark blue and white, Air Force women in light blue. And it looks like... The Air Force women just psyching themselves up before the game. They'll be kicking from left to right. And it is going to be Haley Hutana who kicks off. Decent kick that finds touch. Indiana Lewis finds a woman, almost a fumble there, but they do well to hold on to the ball. That's a fantastic tackle. And the ball changes hands. Referee calls for a scrum. Air Force feed. Okay, Navy feed. Now ball! Navy ball! Comes fed in by Amy Carpenter. It's a good run by Gabby Bryan. A.B. Carpenter kicks for touch. Well, that's a poor line out into... Possession is given away. Lucy Eden is taken down. If 
Haley Hutana makes the kick. It's gathered by Caleb Arlo, who's brought down in a crunching tackle. Air Force fans enjoyed that one. Not giving them any room to move. But Navy get a chance to just relieve some of that pressure, kick for touch, and try again from the lineup. The kick did go out. Kick just finds touch. It was a close call, and Sergeant Brooks Saunders, captain from the Air Force, is ready to pounce. And Dan Lewis will get another go from the line out. They squandered possession last time. They almost did it this time as well, but they get their hands on it. That's a good run by Gabby Bryan. Christine Fine is taken down. A good spell of possession here for the Navy women, but that's a knock on, and it's going to be a scrum with the Air Force feed. Gonna have to redo that one. Good run by Haley Hutana. They try and take it from dummy half. Brought down very quickly. Hannah Graham does well to hold on. And Air Force get a penalty, a chance to kick from touch. put themselves in a really good attacking position. It's a wonderful kick for touch. It's the first line out of the game for the Air Force. In a decent attacking position as well. It's a good line out. Georgia Baldwin is put down and possession is given away. Navy come away with the ball. Oh, she knocks one off. Indiana. That's an absolutely brilliant run from Indiana Lewis. She's eventually brought down. It took a few of them and possession is given away, but referee says that it wasn't rightly done, and Navy get a good chance to kick for touch and put themselves in an attacking position. A few early opportunities for both teams, squandered with some sloppy play, but it looks like the best one of the game is going to come to the Navy. It's a brilliant run from Indiana Lewis before. It's knocking two or three women out of the way. And a good line out. Eventually makes its way. Christine Fine, who's taken down.
Brooke Higgins is brought down. Marissa Prisak tries to go through too many bodies. And maybe take a quick tap. One or two calls for offside, not given. And eventually it is, and it looks like they're going to kick for goal. So the Navy's Amy Carpenter, captain and petty officer at the Navy, looks like she'll be the one to kick for goal. Just waiting for the tee to come out onto the pitch. We get the first points up on the board of this game. Amy Carpenter for the Navy from right in front. The kick is good, the flags go up, and the Navy lead. It took 10 minutes, but the first points are on the board now. The Navy leading the Air Force, three points to nothing. Good kick straight down the middle from Amy Carpenter. And not the greatest kick back. It's taken by Jenna Shile. Christine Fine doesn't get very far before she's taken down. Where's the Indiana Lewis, who isn't allowed to make the same amount of meters this time around. Some good tackling from the Air Force. It's not letting her get rid of the ball. It's just not able to get the ball at the moment. And Possession goes the other way. going to be a scrum with Air Force defeat. Some good defense there from the Air Force. Holding her up, not letting her release the ball. Now they get a chance to hit back quickly. Force come away with it. They go out, out wide. And they eventually give up position. Some sloppy passing there. She didn't know where the ball was going. It ended up going behind her and Navy come away with the ball. It's just a bit rushed, but now the Navy can relieve some of that pressure. Kick for touch. Kick straight into the crowd. Thought they were aiming for us at the moment up here. Ah, oh, possession is squandered right away from that line out. It was a wonderful take by Brooke Saunders. And the Air Force will come forward again. Really, really disappointing from the Navy there. They had a chance to relieve some of that pressure and they just they literally just threw the ball away. Taylor Lemon with a fantastic run. She manages to release the ball. Air Force go out wide. They've got space out wide. Brittany Madden cuts inside, is eventually taken down. Go back the other way. JD Torrance is isolated down the right hand side. If they can get the ball to her, they may go the other way. They do. It is touched, but it was knocked backwards. Ball goes wide again. That's a, that's a good take from Phoebe Hope. Who gets around two, cuts inside. 
tries to release the ball, but Khan is brought down just before the try line. They go out wide the other way. Hannah Graham holds onto it. Manages to release. But the Navy come away with it. Wonderful defense. But the decision. Penalty given the other way. They're just deciding what to do here and They're going to take the tap. The Air Force very close to the try line. Sarah Hume is taken down. It was to Hannah Graham. They take a quick tap and are brought down just before the try line. Offside decision given to the Air Force. They just can't seem to break that last line of defense. They will take another tap and have another go. It's a very, very good opportunity for the Air Force to get the first try on the board. The tap is taken. It's given to Taylor Lemon. He's trying to force herself over the line. She just can't. They've got space down the left-hand side. It goes out wide, but it's knocked on. She just couldn't hold on to the ball. If she could, she... Didn't seem to be anyone between her and the try line, but she just couldn't hold on to the ball. And the Navy survive again. That's some very good last ditch defending the Navy. But it's actually getting out when they have the ball in their own half that they've struggled with at times in this game. Had a few penalties go their way. That led to the eventual uh, three points on the board, but they've struggled to play the ball out from the back. A couple of disappointing lineouts. Not entirely sure what they're waiting for at the moment. Scrum is spread by Amy Carpenter. Maybe come away with it. It's a wonderful take. And they've got space to run through. She manages to get rid of the ball. And it's Amelia Ambrose that's eventually taken down. That's a wonderful passage there from the Navy. This is much better stuff from them. We come down left hand flank again. Madison Ball is taken down. She holds onto it, eventually passes the ball. Courtney Frankel still holding onto it. And it takes four or five women to take her down. She manages to release. Oh, Indiana Lewis juggled the ball for a second there, but managed to hold onto it. Ball comes back out to the Navy, and it's a penalty. Chance for Navy to get some more meters on the board. Well, they decide to take the tap. And it goes to Indiana Lewis. I think the plan was to get her to just run at, run at the Air Force and try and make a couple more meters. They thought that maybe they'll get more distance out of it, but she just couldn't hold on to the ball. She juggled it earlier and managed to hold on this time. 
possession is given away in a dangerous area of the pitch. And the Air Force can come forward again. Navy come away with the ball again. That's a wonderful tackle. It was taken by Gabby Bryan, who was eventually taken down and managed to get rid of the ball. The ball that time was dropped by Amelia Ambrose, and the Air Force come away with it through Corporal Hannah Graham. It's releasing the go out wide. And the kick is taken by Halle Hutana and chased. It will be a Navy jersey that gets there first. And Haley Hutan, who chased her own kick, takes it down as well. And they force the kick the other way. Line out to be taken by the Air Force from a good area. They've taken a quick line out, trying to catch him off guard. Bertrand Wanahan's taken down. Ball to out to Hannah Graham. A good tackle from Madison Ball. Decisions given the other way. And it's quickly taken by the Air Force, but there was no tap. It was a poor pass to lose Eden, but she did well to gather it. Pass that wide to Sarah Hume. He does want to let go of the ball. Brittany Madden cuts inside. It looked like she might have about to get away there, but she couldn't. Rachel Wanahan runs into space and gives it to Taylor Lemon, who has a player out wide and finds her. They had one more pass to make before a definite try, but it was cut out. But the Air Force will push forward again. And eventually it goes over the line, and a try is given. The pressure from the Air Force finally pays off. And the first try of the game belongs to the Air Force. Navy did well to hold out for a while there, but when you give the ball away in that position so many times and face wave after wave of attack, eventually they are going to get over the line, and they did. So as it stands, it's Air Force 5, Navy 3, with aircraft swimmer Brittany Madden who's actually been, um, been in for two and a half years as an avionics technician in Brisbane. She'll be the one to take the kick. She's only played one season of rugby union while she was at school. Although, fun fact about her, rugby union isn't really her favourite sport. She, uh, without fail, will always watch the Crofts Dog Agility Championship. Some of those dogs are agile. The kick is good. It, almost good. No. It looked like it was going to hit the bar and go over, but it doesn't. And the score remains Air Force 5, Navy 3. 23 minutes played. Oh, it's a good kick. It's high. 
and it's well taken. Well taken by Georgia Baldwin. And the Air Force get a chance to kick from touch and mount another attack. The kick from Haley Hutana is a good one. When it comes to lineouts, both teams have actually been quite poor and sloppy. Maybe something for both teams to work on. Tap is taken, and the ball is given to Tyra Longley. Go out wide to the left hand side. Madison Ball tried to squeeze through, but she's taken down. Millie Ambrose tried to release earlier, but she couldn't. Eventually does. They have to pass while they take the ball down. And that's a good kick from Amy Carpenter. Amy Carpenter, one of the more experienced players out there. She's played four years of rugby union, the Australian Defence Force. And after a good kick, the Navy will get the call back, the ball back. Be a scrum, Navy feed. <laughs> Navy come away with the ball after the scrum. a good tackle. Some of the players want it to be released earlier. It eventually is. Ball comes out wide. Jenna Shield is taken down. Fleeces, but Orissa Prislak can't get very far. Decision goes Air Force's way, and much of the frustration of some of the uh, some of the Navy players who wanted them to work a little bit harder. But it's going to be a scrum Air Force feed. Brooke Higgins is just being told to watch the outside for the Navy. It's going to have to be done again. So Brooke is being told to... Uh, Brooke Higgins is being told to watch. Watch the Air Force's number eight. Watch the blind side. One, bring, one Brooke being told to watch another. Brooke Saunders for the Air Force, captain. Brooke Saunders, who's a sergeant. She's been in for 14 years and is an aircraft technician in Newcastle. She's played for a number of years and represented the ADF side and the Australian Wallaroos. 
That's a poor scrum from an Air Force point of view, and it comes away to the Navy. And a good run there from Amy Carpenter. It's eventually taken down. It's a good chance for the Navy to get their first try on the board. Who goes that way to Gabby Bryan? He passes again. Jenna Schill pushes one woman off her, is eventually taken down. And there we get a decision. And a player stayed down for the Air Force. I'm not sure who it is, but she's down holding her shoulder. And meanwhile, while the game's still going on, the Navy get their first try of the game. So a double blow for the Air Force there. One player down, holding her shoulder. I'm not sure what exactly happened, but Navy went on and scored from that position to get their first points on the board from a try. And they lead the Air Force eight points to five with a kick to be taken. So 10 minutes to go till half time. The Navy have a good chance to extend their lead. Meanwhile, the Air Force player has got back to her feet, which is good to see, but her arm is in a sling, and that could be her game finished. On the field, fullback Carla Barlow, who's a seaman, takes the kick. And the flags stay down, it's wide. So the score remains Navy 8, Air Force 5. Just under 10 minutes to play. Both sides have missed their kicks for goal. That's not the greatest kick, and it's well gathered there by Courtney Frankel, who's eventually taken down. It's a strong challenge, but she does well to pass the ball before she goes down, and that's a wonderful, wonderful run there by Amy Carpenter. Tackled on the halfway line. Good run by Madison Ball as well, who... Gains a good f five or six metres. Looks like that's Taylor Stark who was forced backwards. Madison Ball can't get very far and... There's going to be a scrum. Scrum Air Force feed. Just under eight minutes to go. And the scrum is won by the Navy. Brittany Madden makes a great run. But loses possession. And the Air Force looks to push forward again. Oh, that's a great run. Amelia Ambrose is holding on to her for her life. It's good that she did too because she might have been away if she couldn't slow her down like that. But just a phenomenal run there. Rachel Monaghan passes before she goes to the ground. Some good passing now by the Air Force. Whoever kick big kick forward. It goes into goal. 
She opts not to touch it down. She backed herself to run a bit there and Air Force take a quick tap. And it goes out wide to Flight Lieutenant Sarah Hume who puts the ball down for a try right down the right-hand side. When the ball went into the, uh, into the Navy's try line, she should have grounded it. She opted to run, ended up losing the ball. A quick tap was taken, clever play from the Air Force. And eventually, Flight Lieutenant Sarah Hume puts it down for her first try of the game. Sarah Hume, who's uh, been in for nine years and is a Hercules pirate, has played for nine years since joining ADFA and has represented the Australian Defence Force side and she's been in the Brumby squad in the 2011-2012 season. She's actually playing with a broken toe. So, well done to Sarah. So as it stands, the Air Force lead the Navy by 10 points to 8. Going to be leading aircraft swimmer Haley Hutana has another go. This kick is going to be harder than her first one to con convert. The first one was from a difficult position as well. She couldn't get the first one, but she'll really want to get this one. And have just a little bit of a buffer there. Haley Hutana's kick. Drifts wide and doesn't make the distance either. Score remains 10-8. Two tries to the Air Force. Neither converted. But some clever play and some quick thinking puts them back ahead almost as quickly as they went behind. But it was some poor decision making from the Navy that let them get into that position in the first place. She really should have grounded the ball in her own area. She opted to take it out back herself and it's a decision that backfired. Just under five minutes to go in the first half. Kayla Butler's kick is high. It's an awkward one to catch. It ends up getting knocked backwards, but Air Force come away with the ball. Georgia Baldwin makes some good meters. Ball goes out wide. Nice pass inside. And Sergeant Brooks Saunders, the captain, just knocked one woman over. And she's actually stayed down, holding her head. And ball's knocked on and goes the other way. Physio's going to have to come on the pitch to look at her, though. She took a hell of a knock there from Brooks Saunders. She's holding her head. So if there is signs of a concussion, then she probably won't be able to play again. Brooke Saunders just comes and checks on her, makes sure she's okay. But they're calling for a stretcher. So it looks like her game's going to be over, and hopefully she's okay. But a stretcher has been called, so evidently she can't. doesn't look like she's going to be able to get up on her own. Clock has been stopped, three minutes to go. It is going to be an Air Force ball. When play does resume. Well, she's trying to get back to her feet. No, she's groggy. She's definitely copped a knock to the head. She just has to shift onto the stretcher. So hopefully she's okay, though. And this is just a precaution, nothing too serious. And for all the competition, it's nice to see one of the Air Force players coming to help out as well. And a round of applause from both sides. And many in the, in the crowd as well as she stretched off.
That's disappointing from her, for her, disappointing for the Navy as well. But hopefully it's nothing too serious. This play is resumed via a tap by the Air Force. Richard Monahan's taken down. Ball goes out to Hannah Graham. Goes away to Georgia Baldwin. Once they release that wide. Haley Hutano, who offloads the ball. It makes its way to Brooke Saunders. Then they go out wide. Looks like that was Phoebe Hope that was eventually brought down. Sarah Hume knocks one over. And it's going to take a few to drag her down. She's gained, what, 10 metres there? Wonderful run by her. Makes its way back out to Hannah Graham. This is a good spell here from the Air Force, putting a lot of pressure on. That pass was a poor one. Knocked backwards, though, and Air Force still come away with it. And that's a wonderful run there by Brittany Madden, and eventually she's brought down. She ran a long way before she was brought down, but a lot of that was sideways, and it's a penalty. And a quick tap again by the Air Force. Ball's passed inside to Rachel Monaghan, who's brought down. Manages to release. A good chance late in the game with 30 seconds to go for the Air Force to extend their lead right before half time. Oh, that's a wonderful run there by Haley Hutano. Who step past one, step past another, and then eventually puts the ball down. And with just under 20 seconds left in the first half, it's a great time for the Air Force to score and extend their lead. 15 points to eight. So the last play of the game will be a chance for the Air Force to extend their lead even further. Right before halftime, a good time to score from them, but you have to imagine that it now changes the halftime team talk from the coaches of the Navy. Haley Hutana with a cracking run there, and Brittany Madden with a chance to extend the lead. There have been four tries in this game. Three of them have come the way of the Air Force and none of them have been converted. Just the one conversion today via a pen penalty kick for the Navy. Brittany Madden, avionics technician in Brisbane. Only played one season, and her kick hits the post. That's the second time that they've actually hit the uprights. It looked like it was going to go over that time, but it didn't either. The referee calls for halftime. The halftime score here, our first of two games between the Air Force and the Navy. The women's game, Air Force leading the Navy 15 points to eight. Three tries for the Air Force against one for the Navy and one early penalty for the Navy as well.
Welcome back to Bar TV Sports. For the first day of the uh, Australian Defence Force Championship and Community Day, the first game of the three-day event, the second day will be on Wednesday, the third next Saturday at Gangalan, is between the Air Force women and the Navy women. The Air Force women currently leading 15 points to 8. Air Force looking very, very dangerous in attack. Navy defended well for a while, but were eventually broken down. Had a few spells in attack as well, but some sloppy passing and play cost them. Both teams have had their halftime team talks. Got to hear some of the Air Force's halftime team talk. It was uh, Sergeant Brooke Saunders, who is the captain, the number eight. She's happy to continue with quick lineouts. She says they're working for them. Navy to kick off. 40 minutes, the Navy had turned this one around. They started off well early, conceded late. And it's a good quick and a good take as well. Phoebe Hope catch the, caught the ball and was eventually brought down. Struggling to release the ball at the moment. Eventually they do. Brooke Saunders looks to run from scrum half. It's brought down. And they will kick. The kick stays in and is well chased and well taken by... Uh, it was Carla Ballo who took it and got past one. Navy yelling at the Navy players yelling at each other for support. Eventually, they do come away with the penalty, but they're a bit too slow to support each other there. Kick for touch. Eventually, goes out. It looked like it wasn't for a second there, but it does. There were a couple of poor lineouts in the first half from the Navy. They'll be looking for something a little bit better now. Indiana Lewis has actually had a very good game. She had that cracking run in the first half. Some poor lineouts, but if they can do a good job here, which they can't again, but the ball was knocked on. And it'll be a scrum, maybe defeat. So they get away with that one. But I think their lineouts are something they're going to have to work on because. They've conceded possession more times than they've got it on them. But they get a good chance to attack and get an early try in the second half. Currently seven points behind. And you can imagine that late try from the Air Force would have really changed that half-time team talk for the Navy. The message at halftime for the Air Force was defend well. The defense is going to be tested now. If the scrum is a good one from a Navy point of view. And it's going to be a free kick. To the Navy. Who tap and give the ball to Tara Longley, who is brought down and pushed out. Wonderful defending there from the Air Force. Tara Longley pushed out of play. Now the Air Force have a line out of their own. They'll want this one to be a bit better than the one of the Navy just earlier. And it is. That's well taken there. And
Wasn't done properly, though. So it looks like both sides are going to have to work on their lineouts in the training pitch. Scrum Navy feed. We're back where we were about two minutes ago. It comes out to them. Amy Carpenter was taken down. This time, Tara Longley is taken down and manages to stay inside. Madison Ball can't get very far. Indiana Lewis looking to force the issue. She almost did. It always takes a couple to take her down. Ball goes out wide and... Oh, looked like the gap was just going to open up there for Jenna Shield, but it didn't. But Navy still have the ball. Good defending from the Air Force. They go back the other way. Tara Longley's tackled and... It's going to be an Air Force ball. Very, very good defending from the Air Force. Navy's decision making wasn't the greatest, but Air Force now get a chance to kick for touch, relieve some of that pressure. And it's a good kick for touch. And the message from up here for the Navy is to, is to make a change, and it looks like Taylor Stark will come on. Taylor Stark comes on for Jenna Shield. Bringing on another lock. She's just giving some instructions to some of her teammates as well. Uh, wonderful steal there from Navy. But that pass is poor. They get away with it though. And Taylor Stark's first contribution in the game is a positive one. It's much better from the Navy, who are actually coming in support now on the tackles. The ball is eventually dropped, though, and Air Force come away with it. So Navy, every time they have a chance to put some pressure on, they seem to be their own worst enemies at the moment. And now they also give away a free kick to the Air Force. A high tackle. And she stayed down as well, holding her head. There's two players down at the moment. Rachel Monaghan makes it back to her feet. Still another player on the ground. I'm not sure what the issue is. Some ankle strapping about to go on. Once this strapping goes on, she should be able to continue. So Navy with some good spells early on, but some sloppy, some sloppy play to when actually attacking. They've had some good chances in some good positions, but their own worst enemy at the moment. Air Force defending well, forcing a lot of errors. Now they get a chance to move forward as well. They opt to take the tap. And Lucy Eden brings the ball forward. She 
to tackle 10 metres inside her own half. Navy doing well to force them backwards. Good defence from the Navy right now. Hannah Graham's brought down as well. Oh, that's a wonderful run there. And she opts to hold on to the ball herself. She did have some support there, did Brittany Madden, but she held on herself and is eventually dragged out of play. Navy line out right on halfway. Right on the halfway line. And this time they get it. Well, it looked like they were going to, but the ball has fallen to the Air Force. Scrum Air Force feed to be fed by Brooke McHugh. It goes straight back out the same side and it's going to have to be done again. Just under half an hour to go in this game. The Air Force leading the Navy 15 points to eight. First of two games between these two. The second is going to be between the men. It's a good hustle there by the Navy who come away with it. Through Christine Fine who runs a long way before she's eventually tackled. Flag goes up, the ball went out. Will be a an Air Force line out. So a few stoppages now, a few line outs, a few scrums. It's really interrupted the flow of this game. That works more in favour of the Air Force than it does the Navy, who are behind. Once again, a poor line out leads to a scrum, Navy feed. Scrum collapses, it's going to have to be done again. Solid scrum there from the Navy. Very fluid. Oh. It was Gabby Bryan was taken down. Tackled. Tried to pass the ball while she was tackled. Ended up flying to an Air Force player who get a free kick as well. Quicker went forward actually and it's going to be a scrum Air Force feed. She should have just held on to it. Uh, Gabby Bryan, but thought she'd get the ball away earlier, but 
once again the Navy. After what looked like it would be a positive spell. Lose out. Navy very strong on the scrum, but Air Force do manage to come away with the ball. Looking to release it quickly. Eventually they are. Navy managed to get a hand on them and tackle them. Some of the Air Force players on the bench calling on others to support. Hannah Graham tackled. It's going to be a free kick for the Air Force. Who take the tap? And looks at attack down the left-hand side. Phoebe Hope stays on her feet. It's eventually tackled. And that's another penalty. For the Air Force to take another quick tap. So it's Rachel Monaghan makes a great run. Gets through a number of them. Eventually releases the ball backwards. She thought she had support there. She didn't. And the Navy get away with that one. Some sloppy defending turns into an attacking position. And well, it looked like she knocked the ball on there for a second. But on the second swipe at her, she managed to knock the ball backwards. Courtney Frankel tackled. And this time the decision goes the way of the Navy. Who lobbed to kick for touch. Don't know if kicking for touch is... He's taking the best option when you consider some of the poor quality of their lineouts, but... They all back themselves and... Indiana Lewis will have another go. It's a Navy line out from inside the Air Force half. And this time it does come the way of the Navy. It almost went the other way, but they held on well. Oh, that was a... Poor pass. A number of poor passes. A bit of pinball happening with the ball at the moment. And eventually it does come the way of the Navy. and They're pushed back deep in their own half. But it is an Air Force penalty. Some very, very poor passing. A few hospital passes there by the Navy. and Air Force with another attacking opportunity down the right-hand side. And they have space to attack the right-hand side. But Phoebe Hope was pulled down just before she could get over the try line. And some desperate defending turns into another attacking opportunity for the Air Force. It's going to be a scrum Air Force feed. Sergeant Phoebe Hope. Fullback very nearly finding space to get us off over the line. It was some good last ditch defending there from the Navy, but that pressure is still on. Ball comes away, the Navy. Had That's a good run there by Christine Fine, who is still going. Coach is yelling at her to go to ground. She does eventually. And the Navy gets to relieve some of that pressure now. A free kick. And they will take the tap this time. Kayla Barlow is tackled. Just trying to figure out which way to go. They opt to go the left way.
It's a good run by Madison Ball. That's a float of it. The ball floated forward. And it's going to be a scrum. Air Force feed. Navy just can't get out of their own half at the moment. As they reach halfway into the second half, 20 minutes to go in this game. The score is still Air Force 15, Navy 8. Halftime team talk from the Air Force. Very much centered around defense. They seem confident that if they could keep their structure, then Navy wouldn't be able to score against them. So far, it is seeming that way. Navy struggling to get out of their own half. And a good chance for the Air Force to push forward. Goes out wide to Phoebe Hope. Finds Jody Torrance on the right hand side, but the pass to Brookman wasn't a great one and she can't hold on to it. And Phoebe Hope has stayed down, the fullback for the Air Force. Just outside the pitch. She looks like she's really hurt herself. And it looks like her game's over as well. So, Phoebe Hope, the latest player to go off injured. There's been a few injuries today. And um, Sadie's Bowers will come on. Come on for the Air Force. Maybe want to play on the player is off the field. Referee calls for time on. So scrum Navy feed. Navy need to get some points on the board very quickly. So far they're struggling to get out of their own half. And just to confirm, Officer Cadet Mercedes Bowers came on for the injured Phoebe Hope. Navy play the ball out wide. That's a great run there from Brooklyn, from uh, Courtney Frankel. Play the ball quickly. Oh, that's another wonderful run there. This time it's fly back. Gabby Bryan making some great meters. But it's going to be a penalty for the Air Force. They managed to get uh, get into the opposing half this time, but I couldn't make anything of it, and it's going to be a scrum Air Force feed. Abigail Bryan is just warming up on the sideline for the Navy, as per the instructions of the coaches up here. They're frustrated at some of the, a little bit of the sloppiness coming out of their side. But they have been working much harder in these past five, ten minutes. But neither side getting any points on the board. 25 minutes played in the second half. The Air Force doing a good job of just shutting the game down. They're ahead by seven. They're not taking any risks. Hmm. The scrum's going to be taken again. 
Oh, a penalty's gone the way of the Air Force. He looks like they'll take the tap. The ball's given to Rachel Monahan. Makes a good run before eventually being tackled. It's now played out wide and she's driven back. She manages to offload. Air Force come forward again, but high tackle. And the Air Force take a quick tap, or they look to take a quick tap, but the referee just pulls them back to the position where the foul was actually made. Rachel Wanahan takes the ball forward again. It's a strong tackle there. Look like Sarah Hugh might stay down for a second, but she's got back to her feet. And that was a good pressure there from the Navy to force the mistake. It was Jenna Scheel who, who put the pressure on the player, forces the knock on, and it's going to be a scrum Navy feed from inside the Air Force half. Under 15 minutes to go in the second half, the score is still Navy 8, Air Force 15, Air Force leading by 7 points. All the points came in the first half. Three tries for the Air Force against a try and an early penalty for the Navy. Scrum finally makes its way out. And it's a good run there by Amy Carpenter, who got the ball to Carla Borlo. Chelsea Hamilton pushes forward, but she stopped. Navy working much harder now. Indiana Lewis makes a great run forward. Air Force have struggled to take her down all game. Gabby Bryan decides to go out wide. Courtney Frankel is tackled. She had support to her left-hand side. She opted to go herself. It's a kick taken into the box. It bounces back and is taken well by Sarah Hume. It was a good bounce for her. And she's taken down. And now Air Force are under some pressure in their own half. They've got the ball just outside their own try line. Navy doing everything they can to force them back. And it's a penalty to the Air Force to relieve that pressure. A good passage of play there from the Navy, but still they can't get any points on the board. Under 13 minutes to go. And it's a good kick for touch. Lauren Hill take the line out. It goes over a lot of people's heads, but it does come the way of the Air Force. And that's an absolutely cracking run there from Georgia Baldwin, who takes the ball all the way into the Navy's half. It's a wonderful, wonderful run. And a great run as well, and a wonderful dummy there by Haley Hutana. She scored a great run, late, she scored a great try, sorry, late in the, uh, in the first half where she skipped past a couple of players. But eventually that momentum is stopped. And the Navy get the ball back. But a really good passenger play. Very positive there from the Air Force. Navy getting caught out on their heels a little bit there. Had their lines broken twice in quick succession. They do get the ball back. It'll be a scrum with their feed. But that's something they're going to have to watch out for. Because another try for, for the Air Force at this stage. And you have to imagine that's basically game over. Especially given the way that the Air Force have been defending at the moment. Navy just struggling to get anything past them. Navy scrum feed. 
It's going to have to be done again. For the Navy, you've got uh, Tara Longley just icing her shoulder. Not sure if we're going to see her again. The Navy look like they're about to bring on Abigail Bryan. She's getting some final instructions. Scrum eventually comes out the way of the Navy. And she's got lots of space. Oh, and that pass looked like it was going to be a good one, but it was dropped by uh, it was dropped by Carla Barlow and she tried to get her foot in and kick it before the ball hit the ground, but knock on is the call and it's going to be a scrum Air Force feed. Ten minutes to go in this game. Abigail Bryan comes on, joins the scrum right away. And it's a flank of Brooke Higgins that's come off. It's a great run there by uh, by Taylor Stark. And it's a free kick for the Navy. Taken quickly. But the referee forced them to take it again. You can see the desperation start to creep in now from the Navy. Protect the tap. Amy Carpenter makes another run forward. Arisa Preslak is tackled and the ball goes the other way. Air Force move forward now. That was too easy for them. One Air Force player has stayed down. Play is resuming. They go out wide. Haley Hutana, who's been a star all game, makes a great run, turns another challenge, and she will score. And it looks like she will score right under the post as well. A wonderful run by Haley Hutana. Step two players, turns another. And then there was no one between her and the goalpost. She puts it down, run underneath the red dot. And you have to imagine that this game is all done and dusted. Air Force lead 20 points to 8 with a kick to come from right in front. Haley Hutana getting her second of the game. She go on late in the first half and she's got the decisive try now. Navy are going to need something special to come back from here. They've struggled to push forward all game, especially in the second half. They've just been shut out and Haley Hutana puts the legs on. Steps a number of players, turns another, a brilliant turn. Puts the ball down in a good position. And you have to imagine that this kick will be converted as well. So Brittany Madden, aircraft swimming. Flags go up. It's a good kick. And the Air Force extend their lead by another two points. The Air Force lead 22 points to eight. With about six minutes remaining in this game, you have to imagine that's all over. Because Navy are going to need something very, very special to come back from here. And they've struggled to break that line. And when they have, they've just been a bit too sloppy on the ball. 
just a wonderful second half performance. A very, very professional performance from the Air Force. Mixed in with a moment of magic as well by Haley Hutana. The Navy bench just trying to cheer their team on for these last six minutes. It's plenty of time in rugby terms. That's well taken and well that's it. Somehow she manages to get the ball backwards. Looked like she was going to drop it. Wonderful awareness there to take the ball back and Air Force still have it. They attack down the left hand side. Gretchen Wanahan brought down. Navy player stayed down, holding her head. And Air Force Captain Brooke Saunders calling on her team to take the ball out. But play goes on. And it's a good run there. Brooke McHugh has broken the line. And she swives the hit as well. And eventually she's brought down. It's the Air Force with a wonderful spell here and they get the penalty as well. But meanwhile the Navy, currently a player less and are going to have to bring someone down and looks like they've got a player limping as well. Alexandra Travat's come on for the Navy. She'll replace the injured player who has gone down holding her head. Hopefully she's okay as well. We saw that happen in the first half to an Air Force player. It looks like they might need the stretcher here again as well. So it is a head injury. So they don't need the stretcher. Players managed to get back to her feet and she's gingerly walking off. And she's, and she's smiling as well. Replacement has been completed and play will resume with a tap from the Air Force. So that's a Rachel one hand. He's tackled. Go down the left hand side. It's a good run by Sarah Hume. She's tackled as well, and the ball is dropped, and it was knocked on. It's knock on there by Brittany Madden. Just over two minutes left for the Navy to get something back in this game. It's a scrum with their feed. Score is Air Force 22, Navy 8. There's still one more game to come at 3.30. It's the same fixture, but with the men. So maybe they'll be able to get some bragging rights back. Otherwise, they're looking at a clean, clean sweep for the Air Force. In game day one. And that's a knock-on as well from the Navy. Just an unforced error there. It wasn't... Moments like that that have just cost the Navy all game. Under no pressure, a straightforward pass, and she just couldn't get her hands on it. And the Air Force have a scrum from deep inside the uh, Navy half. They scored a try late in the first. They have a chance to get one late in the second, but with just over a minute remaining in the game, it's basically over anyway. The Air Force with a 14-point lead have a chance to extend it. They have one minute to extend it. And it's the vice captain, Diana McAvoy, to feed the scrum. She's actually been there for three years. She's an aircraft technician in Richmond. 
She's played on and off during high school. She did break her foot, but that wasn't in a sport-related injury. Uh, sport-related injury. Air Force do well to release. And it's a good tackle there on Lorna Hill. Air Force attack this left-hand side. It looked like it was going to be a good pass, but... That's a wonderful tackle there by... Uh, it was Chelsea Hamilton who made the tackle. Air Force forced back to the halfway line, but they still have the ball and can still move forward. One hand manages to release. Goes to Hannah Graham, who's tackled from just inside the Navy half. Brittany Madden tried to cut inside. She's tackled, and the ball is kicked out, and that's the end of this game. Very, very professional performance from the Air Force. They went down early thanks to a penalty kick that was converted by the Navy. They came back with a couple of tries for the Navy goal one of their own. A late, uh, a late first half try by Haley Hutana. A wonderful run when she skipped past two plays to put the ball down. Extended the Air Force lead at the end of the first half. And then in the second half, the Air Force completely shut the Navy out. Navy didn't really have any good opportunities to attack. And then a moment of magic from Haley Hutana. Skip past a couple of players, turns another, put the ball down right underneath the red dot to put the game to bed. The final score here in the first of two games, the Australian Defence Force Rugby Union Championship and Community Day, the first of three Community Days, is Air Force Women 22, Navy Women 8. Stay with us because in half an hour we'll have the same fixture but with the men. Double headed here today at Viking Park live on Bar TV Sports.
Hello everyone and welcome back to Bar TV Sports for this second game of the second game. It's a double header between uh, the Air Force and the Navy. The women started off first with the women's Air Force defeating the women's Navy 22 points by eight and it's time for the men to have their go. We're just waiting on them to make their way out onto the pitch and while we do that we'll start off by reading the team sheets starting off with the Navy. Number one loose head prop is Connor Hoban playing as the hooker. Number two is Clark Chancellor. The tight head prop number three is Jerome Dylan Baker. The two locks are Aaron Lowdown and Josh Friend. Josh Friend is the captain playing as number five. He's a lieutenant in the Navy. The two flankers are Lachlan Taylor and Thomas Bailey. Number eight is Dom Morris playing as halfback is Corey Lee. Fly half is Jonty Hurtisfield. He's the vice captain. Number 11 left wing is Eddie Tomsana. Inside centre is Mitch Walton. The outside centre is Scott Hogan. Playing as right wing number 14, Zeb Leroyd. Leroyd. And as fullback is Harry Hibbs. Their reserves are Nicholas Stallard, Kieran Welch, Jacob Morrow, Shane O'Reilly, Peter Taylor, George Kentakaris, Thomas Hiramatsu, and Eugene Connolly. Now the team sheet from the Air Force, starting off with the first 15. Number one, loose head prop is Logan Morley. Number two in hooker, Petrie Burney. Tight head prop is Andrew O'Toole. Playing second rower is Nick Williams. The other second rower is Adam Dimer. Blindside flanker is Benjamin Hines. The other flanker is Liam Dixon. Playing as number eight is Tyson Kilmister. Number nine, Cameron Redpath. He is the scrum half. Number 10, Dominic Chamberlain. He's the fly half. Playing on the left wing is Joshua Hill. Inside centre is Isaac Neep. Outside centre is Daniel Gruel. Right wing, Dylan Woods. And fullback number 15, Emerson Burgess. Their reserves are Sean Ward, Harrison Lamarquand, Stephen Ackhurst, Lachlan White, Mitchell Egan, and Brady Cochran. And looks like both teams are just moments away from making their way out onto the pitch. So this is the last game of today. First of three days in the Australian Defence Force Rugby Union Championships and Communities Open Days. They're all free events. The main one is going to be next Saturday at Gingalan Oval, just across, across town here in Canberra. They'll start off with a game between the Air Force women and the Australian police women, following a game between the Air Force men and the Australian policemen. The classic ADFRU against the classic Wallabies and Brumbies team, that's going to be a great one. And some games at halftime as well. There's also going to be a current Brumbies meet the fans during the entire game. The Royal Military College marching band will uh, have a presentation. The Navy women will take on the Army women, and the Navy men will take on the Army men in the final game of the three-day event, the second of which we're going to be back here at Viking Park on Wednesday at 1.30 for the Army women to take on the Air Force women, and at 3.30 on Wednesday here at Viking Park, the Army men take on the Air Force men. So a good start to this uh, championship for the, for the Air Force women, defeating the Navy women earlier today, 22 points to 8. The players are just making their way out onto the pitch now. A guard of honour on both sides from the women's team. So two teams are set to line up for the commencement of the national anthem.
national anthem there. A few players singing along. They actually sounded quite good. I wonder if there's an Air Force and Navy choir. Interesting to see if some of these boys are a part of it. Air Force will be attacking from left to right in this half. Navy from right to left for those of you watching at home. Air Force are in the light blue. Navy in the dark blue. It's almost purpley. Dark blue shorts. The Air Force. And it is the Air Force who kick off. Dominic Chamberlain kicks off high. It's well taken and he's crunched to the ground. And it's an early penalty for the Navy. Kick finds touch. So, Navy line out from just inside the Air Force half. Both teams are working really hard, pushing forward. Tackled just inside the Air Force half. Ball goes out wide to Adam Dharma, who's brought down. Maybe go back out there, down the right hand side. And possession switches ways. But that's a poor pass, and it's, it was picked up by Dominic Chamberlain. He managed to offload, but. The Air Force are going to come away with the ball again. So the Navy are going to come away with the ball again. It's a scrum Navy feed. Some poor passing there from the Air Force early on. Gifting possession away, but they come away with the ball. Both sides fighting for the ball early on, but the decision goes the way of the Navy. It's a scrum Navy feed. Coralie to feed the scrum. Eventually it comes back out to him and he goes out wide. John T. Hardisfield. Okay, that pass was in danger of being intercepted for a second there, but it went to the man. They take the ball back down to the right hand side. The kick is taken by John T. Huddersfield. Looks like it's going to go. Didn't quite go into the into the goal line and Air Force kick it downfield. It's going to be a line out for the Navy. Kick didn't go as far as he would have liked it to go. Just didn't quite get the angle right. But a good early spell of possession. Five minutes played in the first half for the Navy. 
who can't hold on to the ball off the line out and it comes away for the Air Force who also get the decision going their way. Yeah. Scrum, Air Force feed. And the Air Force have a chance now just to relieve some pressure, get the ball out of their own half. That's a big kick. Torpedo down the field, and it's very well taken by fullback Harry Hibbs. He manages to stay off his feet on the first challenge. Is eventually brought down right on the halfway line. Tom Morris just runs over his man before eventually being tackled. That's a wonderful cutout pass. And it's Eddie Tommaso who has a chance to make a great run before he's eventually tackled out of play. It was a great run by Eddie Tomasano and a wonderful tackle as well to drag him out of play. Line out. And the Air Force will take it. Some very, very good running from the Navy. And the line out's a good one as well. The Air Force is going to have to look out for those cutout passes. There's good pressure there from the Navy. and It was the fullback, uh, Emerson Burgess, who he took the kick, but it looked like it just came off the side of his foot, the outside of his foot, because the line-out's going to be taken from very, very deep inside the Air Force's half. He's disappointed with that one, and it's a great chance from the Navy to get an early try on the board. Well, that's a good one. It was held. They look to push him as far as they can towards, towards the try line. And it looked like they were moments away from scoring, but the decision's gone the way of the Air Force. And they'll have another chance to kick for touch and this time hopefully take the ball a little bit further. And they do. Ball nearly hits us. Bit of pushing and shoving in the box as well from both sides. A little bit of gamesmanship there. And just up the intensity a little bit. Navy very, very close to scoring their first try. And Air Force got away with that one. They get the line out and look to get the ball out of their own half. Smart play. Managed to step one player, but he's eventually taken down. A couple of players tackling each other nowhere near it. And the ball comes loose. Air Force ball. Very, very good pressure early on here from the Navy. Just not giving the Air Force any space whatsoever. And but it is going to be a scrum, Air Force feed. And they have another chance to just get the ball out of their, out of their own half. We wouldn't be surprised if they kick you and it goes a little bit further. Both teams working very, very hard on the scrum. It eventually comes out and it's very nearly tackled before he can make the pass. It's a very, very good pressure early on from the Navy. It's Liam Dixon's tackled. He's trying to release the ball and it's a penalty to the Air Force. Emerson Burgess will look to take, look to find touch. Just setting himself up. He's looking for a big kick here. It's out. And the Air Force will take the line out from just inside their own half. The good early pressure from the Navy. So far, nothing to show for it. Ten minutes played. Score is still nil. Nil all between the uh, Air Force and the Navy. Yeah, 
Another good line out there. Lurk and Morley managed to shake off one challenge, couldn't shake off the other. Ball is eventually released. And again. Liam Dixon tackled hard. Navy still forcing them backwards. Air Force haven't been able to gain any meters, but and the Navy will come away with the ball. Very, very good profession, uh, pressure. Very good defending from the Navy early on. Ten minutes played, it's been all Navy. And they take a quick tap and attack the right-hand side. That was a very, very good run there by Scott Hogan. Got very, very far. Started to hold on to the ball. Looks like that's Corey Lee still going. They attack the left-hand side now. It's a cutout pass. It's well taken there by Eddie Tomsana. Who's dragged out of play. And for their players just being told to relax now. It looked like it was uh, Daniel Gruul. I don't know if he was unhappy about something that was said, but um, he gave the player a push and no reaction from the, uh, from the Navy player. Good defending uh, down this left-hand side by the Air Force, but it wasn't the greatest cutout pass and it wasn't the greatest line out either. And the ball's taken forward by Connor Hoban. And eventually it's Dragged over the line, and it is a try. Navy get the first points of the game. And they lead five points to nothing. With 12 minutes played. Halfback Corey Lee to take the kick. His rank, Abel Seaman. Looking for a chance to make it 7 0. Very, very good early pressure from the Navy. And now they have five points on the board to show for it. And it came off the back of another good attacking spell and a poor line out by, uh, by the Air Force. Looks like Corey Lee is going to try and curl this one in. The way he's standing behind it. He's from the side. Oh, that's a wonderful kick. Straight down the middle. The flag goes up. And the Navy lead the Air Force. 7 nothing. About 13 minutes played in the first half. Air Force so far haven't been able to mount an attack. It's been all Navy. They've been defending well and they've been attacking well. Looked dangerous down both sides, but the, the try came down the left-hand side. That's a big kick, and that's very, very well taken. John T. Hydersfield with a wonderful take. It's a strong run there from Mitch Walton. And the kick is eventually taken. Straight down field. It's a very, very kind bounce for fullback Emerson Burgess, who decides to kick it straight back down the other way. And it goes out from just inside the Air Force's own half. So Navy line out from just inside the Air Force half. Clark Chancellor, the hooker, to take. Traditionally, Hooker's a number two. He's wearing number 21. He's also a leading seaman. It's a good line out. They decide to hold. To push forward. Looks like Clark Chancellor is the man with the ball. Eventually releases. 
They go take the ball down the right-hand side. If he can get one more pass away, he's got to play it free. That's a good ball. And another wonderful pass. And it is Mitch Walton, the inside center, that's going to go all the way, all the way around and put the ball down underneath the post. Two good passages of passages play from the Navy, two tries, and they lead the Air Force 12-0. A great try there from Mitch Walton. And a wonderful build-up play as well. He had him free the whole time. He didn't quite make the pass quickly enough, but he got there eventually, and it didn't matter in the end. They got the try, and a great chance to make it 14-0 with just over half a game played. And after that, Wonderful, wonderful uh, first kick from from Corey Lee to make it to make it seven nothing. You have to imagine he's not going to miss from there. He doesn't miss from there. Too easy. Flags go up. Navy lead the Air Force fourteen points nothing. It wasn't a great performance from the Navy in the women's game, but their men are kind of dominating quite early on and. If it stays like this, then the scoreline could get ugly. So far, the Air Force haven't been able to lay a finger on them. They've been pouring attack, pouring in defense. And the Navy just seem in the mood. Dominic Chamberlain's going to need a good kick here. He goes high. The Air Force player tripped over. He's calling for a penalty. It's not given. He's saying he was tripped. He was going to get there. Play on. Eventually, the Navy get the ball away. They attack down the left-hand side. That's a good run. It was Clark Chancellor. It looked like he might get away, but he was brought down. Take the ball down the right-hand side. Strong running here from the Navy. Who eventually kick the ball downfield. Ball that's not going to find touch. And it's returned by Emerson Burgess, who kicks it out for a Navy line out from just halfway inside the Air Force half. And another good chance for the Navy to, to push forward again. They've actually been quite good from the line outs. They're doing it again and making a lot of meters this way before eventually releasing and taking it down the left hand side. Oh, Scott Hogan very, very strong in the tackle, and the decision goes, goes the way of the Navy. And they are going to kick for touch. Have a line out and look to force themselves over the line before putting it down. It's a tactic that very nearly worked for them earlier in the half. It resulted in a penalty for the Air Force. This time they're looking to finish the job. They hold. Look to force themselves over the line. Doesn't look like they'll get there. But eventually they do when the Navy get themselves another try on the board. Just halfway in the first half and the Navy lead by 19 points to nothing. A very, very good performance here in the Navy, by the Navy in the first half. They lead 19-0 with just half a game played. Half a half played, sorry. And Corey Lee is going to have the chance to extend that to 21.
He had one good kick from the other side earlier on, did uh, Corey Lee. Corey Lee, the able seaman. And he is unable to take that kick. Or unable to get it through the posts anyway. The score remains 19 nothing to the Navy. Half of the first half played in the Air Force. Very early in this game, look like they're almost out of ideas already. Haven't been able to mount a single attack so far. Navy just been all over them. Air Force did win the women's game though, so it is, as it stands, one apiece. It gets knocked back and Air Force come away with the ball, but looks like it was knocked on and it's going to be a scrum Navy feed. fed by Corey Lee. He comes back out to him and he decides to make a run. He kicks it over the head of one player. He's hoping for a kind bounce. It doesn't quite bounce to him. It's recovered. And it's eventually taken out. It looks like it's going to be a line out. Navy to take. Very, very clever play there from halfback Corey Lee. He's managed to chip one player. Didn't quite get his bounce, but they do come away with the ball eventually. And they've been very, very strong with these lineouts. Match not only just get their hands on the ball, like they have now, but hold and push forward. So the tactic this works very, very well for them. Resulted in their last try as well. And eventually they pass the ball out to Mitch Walton, who's tackled. Play the ball down the right-hand side. It looks like they're about to come back out to the left. They do. It finds Jerome Dylan Baker, but he was stopped in his tracks. They might look for a cutout pass here. Harry Hibbs with a great run there. It looked like he had someone down his left-hand side. He opted to go himself. It was probably the right decision. The last time they did that, they were tackled out of play. Navy just relentless in their attack. Constantly pushing forward. But that was... It looked like it was going to be a knock-on, but no, it's a penalty. I think they're just deciding what to do here with it. They take the tap. They're going to kick for touch. They're going to kick for touch. Line out. Hold and try and get the ball over the line again. It's a tactic that resulted in their last try. Might very well result in another one here as well. It's a Navy line out from deep inside Air Force territory, right outside the try line. They hold, go down, look to push over the line. Looks like they're going to get there, and the ball goes down eventually for a try. Air Force extend their lead to 24 points to nothing. I mean, sorry, the Navy extend their lead to 24 points to nothing against the Air Force. And Corey Lee, who... Missed the last kick. Has another chance to get another two points to his name. It was a kick from similar position that he actually got earlier in the game. 
A wonderful curling effort that went straight down the middle. He'll be looking for something very, very similar now. But the Navy just completely dominating this game. 24 nothing. Could be 26 nothing very, very shortly. So halfback, Corey Lee, the able seaman. He's able this time. It's a brilliant kick. Straight down the middle. Flag goes up. Navy lead the Air Force 26 nothing. As it stands, it looks like the scoreline is going to get worse and worse for the Air Force because every time the Navy push forward, they look like they're going to score. They're winning the tactical battle. They're winning the skill battle. They're holding on to the ball well. They're passing well. Very accurate passes, accurate kicks. Everything's working for them, and that's translating to the scoreboard as well. But the Air Force looking to defend very strongly. Ball comes out eventually. Navy will probably look to kick very soon. And they do. It's a kick that... It's a kick that uh, Emerson Burgess is being told to let go to touch, and he has. And it's going to be an Air Force line out from halfway inside their own half. We've seen a lot of lineups for the Navy and we've seen their tactics. Be interesting to see what the Air Force do here. One or two complaints that the uh, the throw wasn't straight. It didn't look straight, but play continues. And the Air Force finally have some possession on the ball. And they're slowly pushing forward from scrum half. Constantly running forward from scrum half. This kick is eventually taken downfield. Fullback, Harry Hibbs being told he has time. He returns the kick. It's coming right down towards where I'm standing right here and just misses the roof here at Viking Park. And the Air Force... Have a line out from inside the Navy half now. And a good chance for them to put some pressure on the Navy and push forward. Line out goes over everybody and I think the decision was for offside. It looked early on like it was going to be a very testy affair but with all the points that the Navy are putting on the board, leading 26 nothing with just over 10 minutes to go in the first half. Hasn't really been the most competitive game so far. The Air Force showing some signs of positivity early on. Had a half-decent spell just before. But the Navy will push forward again. Hold. And they're trying to release. They do, and they take the ball down the right-hand side. Mitch Walton's taken down, and Air Force just trying to psych themselves up. They've got the ball. Looks like they probably will kick for touch. We'll leave some pressure for them. It's a good kick for touch, and they have another line out from inside the Navy half. And they're really trying to psych themselves up now. Burnies take the line out. The last one went over everybody. This one's much better. Possible down the left hand side. Logan Morley. 
runs into a wall of Navy players. Ball's released down the right-hand side. It's a decent run there from Isaac Neep before he's taken down. It's a good defense from the Navy. Not giving them any space. But the Air Force still have the ball. And they attack down the left-hand side. Oh, that's a poor pass, but they get away with it. They are being pushed back, though. They're not really making the meters they want to make. It's good defending there from the Navy. Not giving them any space. But it will be a free kick and a quick tap. And a clear high tackle there. And he puts his hands up as well. It was uh, Dom Morris who... He gave away the foul and he put his hands up right away. He knew what he did. And the Air Force will kick for touch. Through Dominic Chamberlain. And now it's the Air Force's turn to have a line-up from deep inside Navy territory. And they have a chance to put some points on the board now. They're currently down 26 nothing. Looks like they've finally woken up a little bit. But possession changes hands on the line now. That's disappointing. Oh, it looks like it changed hands. And the decision goes the way of the Air Force. a scrum Air Force feed. And just down here on the bench, it looks like uh, Shane O'Reilly is looking to come on for the Navy shortly. Well, that's a hard tackle, and he drops the ball in the tackle. And now there's a bit of a scuffle between the two teams, and needs to be broken up. So it's a scrum Navy feed. Navy with a chance to relieve this pressure now. The ball's been in their own half for a little bit. Corey Lee to feed. Comes back out to him and takes a kick. That bounces and stays in. It had to be gathered well there by the fullback, Emerson Burgess. It was. And he makes a decent run as well. But it's going to be a Navy free kick and they take a quick tap. And they look to chip the ball over a player as well. But I think it was Dominic Chamberlain was there and well, it looked like the Navy about to score another try there, but no, I think the decision is a, a penalty for the Air Force. Look, like the Air Force is going to be put under significant pressure there, but they get the decision and can kick for touch. Just over six minutes to go in the first half. Navy leading 26 points to nothing. It's been a wonderful, wonderful performance from them. Air Force have had a couple of decent spells late in the first half, but really, really struggled early on and really did pay the price. Line out looked like it was going to break for uh, the Navy, but goes the way of the Air Force. Logan Morley's tackled inside his own half. 
Look like they'll go down the left hand side, they go down the right. And the kick is easily taken by Harry Hibbs, who passes it across to the right winger, Zeb Leroyd, who's still got the ball and offloads himself cleverly. Good play from the Navy. With a cheeky little kick, which is being chased. And the Air Force managed to clear it away, but it's only going to come as far as as Harry Hibbs again. They have space down the right hand side. Oh, the cutout pass is a poor one. But it was knocked back, and the Navy still have the ball. Under five minutes to go in the first half here at Viking Park. Navy lead the Air Force 26 points to nothing. The pace of the game was speeding up there, but looks like it's just been slowed down now. Some good defending by the Air Force. We need to see more of that from them. They're really fighting for every ball now. We didn't see much of that earlier on in the first half, and like I mentioned before, it did cost them dearly. They're going to need a really, really big second half to come back from this. So the Navy just very, very slowly pushing forward, slowly making meters. Eventually they come out to the left-hand side, to the big man, Shane O'Reilly. He doesn't get to go any f go very far. And they take the ball down the left-hand side. Harry Hibbs brushes off a number of challenges, offloads. Ball is intercepted, but only as far as... Looked like it was only as far as Eddie Tumsana. But did he get the ball down? The decision is a try. That's a very, very good play there by... Very, very good play there by Eddie Tumsana. It looked like the Air Force player had just intercepted that final cutout pass, but... But it was Tomsana who was there, Tom Sana who was there to, to pounce on it and get the ball down right on the corner. Very, very good play there from the Navy, who now lead 31-0 with just over two minutes left in the first half. The whole thing started via a wonderful, wonderful run by Harry Hibbs, the fullback. And Tim Sano, who had a couple of chances early on in the first half down the left-hand side and was pushed out of play, managed to just keep himself inside of play. And the kick is a very, very good one from Corey Lee. He's much more comfortable taking the kick from the left-hand side where he can curl it in at the Navy lead 33-0 with just over a minute left in the first half. Just a completely dominant performance from the Navy. Air Force responded quite well earlier in, the, uh, earlier in the half, but that feels like a long time ago now. And every time the Navy push forward, they look like they're going to score. It's a big kick, well taken. Clark Chancellor manages to release. Aaron Luden releases as well. He had a decent run forward. He parries a number of challenges. Does Lachlan Taylor, the flanker. He manages, he manages to release. The round underneath our noses now, and you can really hear how, how hard these boys are working. Fighting for every ball. It doesn't matter that they're 33 nil up. They're fighting for every ball. But possession is squandered and goes the way of the Air Force. 
Now the Air Force have a chance to move forward. Hopefully get some points on the board. 30 seconds to go in the first half. Twenty five seconds to go in the first half and Air Force get a penalty. And they will kick for touch and look for one last big chance to get some points on the board before the first half. It was the women's Air Force team that that got a try right at the end of the first half, but that was to put them ahead even further. They ended up winning that game. Men's Air Force team haven't been able to follow suit so far. And this will be the last play of the game. Starting off with the line out for the Air Force. Line out's knocked back. They take the ball down the left hand side of the pitch. They're desperately trying to get something out of it. Emerson Burgess, who makes the run, he offloads. <coughs> he releases very well. They're pushing forward. Desperate to release. They do. Desperate to release again. And that's half time. No, it's a penalty for the Air Force. And, and now this will probably be the last play of the game. So a very, very late chance for the Air Force to get some points on the board. So it's going to be a scrum Air Force feed. And the player that had been sin-binned for the Navy, uh, Don Morris, he gets to come back onto the pitch for this last play. Can the Air Force get some points on the board? Make their job just a tiny bit easier. They're going to have a mountain to climb in the second half. And the way they've played in the first, it doesn't look likely. Right now it looks more of a question of how many are the Navy going to get. Attack down the right-hand side, but the kick has too much weight and it goes far too deep. And that'll do it for this first half. A wonderful, wonderful first half from the Navy, who scored some brilliant tries. A few players out there playing very, very well. Harry Hibbs with a wonderful run. Mitch Walton's played very well. Emmy Tamsana, who nearly got two tries early in the first half, eventually did, pouncing on a loose ball late, late in the first half to put the ball right down in the corner. And a wonderful kicking game as well from uh, Corey Lee, who, who missed the one from the other side. But I think it's quite clear that uh, he's much, much stronger down the left-hand side. And he showed that via a couple of brilliant kicks. Score at halftime here at Viking Park, live on Bar TV Sports. The Navy lead the Air Force 33 points to nothing.
Hello and welcome back to this uh, to Bar TV Sports for this game of rugby union. It's part of the Australian Defence Force Championship Open Day. First of three days, this game is being played between the Navy men and the Air Force men. The Navy men currently winning 33 points to nothing. It's been a dominant performance from them. It was the Air Force women that reigned supreme in the first game. They're beating the women's Navy team, but the men's Navy team restoring some pride and then some. It's a chilly afternoon here at Viking Park in Canberra, currently 9 degrees, 40 minutes to go in this game and it will be the Navy that kick off. Every time they push forward they look like they're going to score, whereas the Air Force needs something special to come back from here and they don't even look like getting points on the board, let alone coming back from this game, but anything can happen. John T. Hurd's field. Kicks high, and it's caught by a caught by a Navy player, but ricocheted off one, went forward to another, and the Air Force get away with that one early. Very exciting first half, lots of tries. Very exciting if you're a Navy fan, that is. Got a bit testy as well. It was almost one or two scuffles. Few players need to be calmed down. First scrum of the second half will be taken or fed by the Air Force through Cameron Redpath. He puts the ball in and it comes back out to him. He opts to go himself and makes a great run. He might go all the way. He's got the fullback to beat and eventually he's pulled down by uh, Eddie Tomsano who Showed great speed to catch up to him, and the Navy will come away with the ball as well. So, very, very positive early signs there from the Air Force, but the ball will go to the Navy, who will kick for touch. Navy fine touch from inside the Air Force half. They've been very, very good from the lineouts. Catching, holding and working very, very hard to make meters. This time they pass. And he's hit heavy. One or two Navy players calling for a high tackle. Referee says nothing doing, play on. They go out to the left-hand side now and Aaron Ludens who's taken down. That's another penalty for the Navy, who look to kick for touch. They can get far enough. They can do their uh, use their their scrum tactic after the lineup. Been very very dangerous from lineouts inside the Air Force half. Air Force, pressure's relieved, they get the ball. Ball eventually comes out. Air Force have lots of space to attack down this left-hand side. If he had just made one more pass, he, it was uh, Stephen Ackhurst who had a lot of space down the left-hand side to, to run into, but he didn't get the ball in the Air Force. Now trying to attack from the other way. It was down the right-hand side that had that early success. This is much better from them.
And it's Andrew O'Toole who's finally tackled from just inside his own half. One player's stayed down. Looks like it could be a potential head injury. It's Dominic Chamberlain, who's a very important player for the Air Force. He's eventually back on his feet, and he looks like he's going to be okay. He was just a bit winded. He looks like he's going to stay on the pitch. It was an Air Force penalty, they kick for touch. And they find touch from inside the Navy half. <laughs> Line out's a good one. They pass the ball deep back into their own half. It's a good run by uh, Logan Morley. They attack the right-hand side again. Liam Dixon runs into a wall. Number of players just left that one. It eventually comes the way of an Air Force player. Knocked backwards. And they'll shift the ball down the right-hand side once again. Isaac Neep taken down. Oh, that's a wonderful run there. Cut, gives the ball around the outside. A few players calling for a forward pass. It, it was a forward pass. And just as the Air Force looked like they'd finally get some points on the board, that final pass was disappointing. I think he just made the run a fraction too early and the ball was given to him forward. Otherwise, he was away. Disappointing for the Air Force, who really feel like they probably should have scored from that opportunity, and they used up a lot of energy doing so. It was Joshua Hill that would have got the try, but instead it's a, it's a scrum, Navy to feed. Score is still 33 nothing in favour of the Navy. The Air Force will just want to get something on the board. Well, that's a fantastic run there from uh, Thomas Hiramatsu. He eventually gets taken down. Three men in that tackle. And they opt to kick. The bounce is a very, very kind one. It was a very, very kind one for Emerson Burgess, who took a step and slipped over. He ended up getting taken very hard, and looked like there was going to be another scuffle about to start, but that one ended as quickly as it started. Air Force still with the ball. That was Liam Dixon, who was tackled. Now possession goes the other way. To the Navy, who go out wide. To Eddie Tomsana, who is once again tackled out of play. It's the third time he's been tackled out of play this game. But the Navy will take that. Be a line out, Air Force to take. It's a much more competitive game in the second half. I have to imagine that the, the Air Force got a bit of a bollocking in that halftime team talk. <laughs> Air Force get a penalty. They will kick for touch. No 
Fine touch. Just inside their own half. So. Line out to be taken by the Air Force from inside their own half. But possession squandered. And Navy push forward again. And they push forward quickly. Play the ball down the right-hand side. The fullback, Harry Hibbs, manages to release the ball. But it's pounced on by an Air Force player. Who looked to run the other way. And that's a decent run there from Dominic Chamberlain. He had a bit of an injury square earlier on. He looks like he's more than recovered. Thought about making the run from scrum half. Eventually passes. Air Force shifting. That's a poor pass and the ball is knocked on. It's going to be a scrum. Navy feed. Halfway inside the Air Force half. Every time the Air Force look like they're having a decent spell of possession, just keeping the ball a bit more. Something's not going right for them. And Kieran Welsh looks like he's about to come on for the Navy. It looks like there could be a double change here. Double change here for the Air Force. As uh, Mitchell Egan and Brady Cochran both look like they're about to come on the pitch. So they'll come onto the pitch and join the scrum, which Navy are feeding. So about 12 minutes played in the second half. The score remains Navy 33, Air Force nothing. Very, very dominant first half from the Navy. Much more even second half, but the balance of play still very much in the favor of the Navy. Connor Hoban for the uh, for the Navy just getting some treatment down down below us on the sideline. Him and Aaron Loden who came off looking to stay warm. It is about eight degrees here at Viking Park. That's a great pass, and again to Zeb Leroy who will put the ball down for a try. Took his time putting it down. He did eventually. Ball went out wide to fullback. Harry Hibbs, who gave it to Zeb Leroy, who puts the ball down, and now the Navy lead 38 points to nothing. First try of the second half. Count comes the way of the Navy. Harry Hibbs, fullback's had a phenomenal game, giving them problems every time he has the ball. Just can't seem to, to take him down, and it was an easy, easy enough pass to Zeb, who... Had not much to do except put it down. He almost didn't put it down. He let an Air Force player get to him first, but gets put down eventually, and the kick is going to be taken by Mitch Walton. So Corey Lee, who had a fantastic kicking game in the first half, won't take this one. Well, he didn't have a great time from the right-hand side. This one's being taken from the right-hand side, and... Mitch Walton's going to look to extend the lead to 40 points. So Walton's kick. Looked like it was. It wasn't going in for a second there, but it curls inside and finds its way between the posts. Flag goes up, and the Navy lead 40 points to nothing with about 26 minutes left to play in the second half. 
just a dominant performance from the Navy. It was the Air Force women that got the win in the first game. Air Force men, looks like a comeback is way too far beyond them. They don't look like scoring, let alone coming back from this. Kick is taken high. It's an easy enough take. He wasn't put under much pressure. And he drops the ball backwards. Ball comes back out to the Air Force, though. Who have a chance from inside the Navy half. They've had plenty of possession, but not much from within the half. The ball very nearly got away there from uh, Mitchell Egan. He didn't realize that it had been released. He recovers well, though, and the Air Force still have the ball. Take the ball down the right-hand side to the fullback. He's taken down. It's a decent tackle from the Navy. And they're working very, very hard to try and get the ball back. They might do when the decision goes the way of the Air Force. So it's going to be a scrum Air Force feed. So the question now is not so much can the Air Force come back, but can they at least get something on the board? They're still working very hard. Both teams are. Navy very, very structured in defense. Ruthless in attack. Air Force look a bit better in the second half, but still not great. Scrum eventually comes out to them. They attack down the left-hand side. Once again, Stephen Ackhurst, maybe with a cutout pass and getting something to him, he would have had space, but... The ball doesn't come out to him. Good defending here from the Navy, forcing them backwards. Benjamin Hines trying to force the issue. He's tackled. And the Air Force take a quick tap after the penalty. And shift the ball down the right-hand side. But the ball is intercepted. It was a poor pass from Lee and Dixon. And the Navy intercepted and is still going. Oh, that's a, that's a decent run from the big man. He skips past a couple of challenges and offloads the ball to Clark Chancellor, who's eventually tackled. He releases the ball quickly, and the Navy pushing forward, looking to make it 45 nothing. Take the ball down the right-hand side. A chip kick over. It's taken by Ackhurst, who stopped in his tracks. Or almost stopped in his tracks. He's holding the ball, eventually makes his way to the ground. And possession will be given back to the Navy. Some great rugby union being played by the Navy now, who are just putting on a bit of a clinic and showing, showing the Air Force how it's done. Half-time score was 33-0. Current score is 40-0. We're almost halfway into the second half. Just over 20 minutes left to play. And the Navy look like they want more. Navy eventually take the strum. And he breaks out wide. But Samsana can't get it down. They're still going and eventually get the ball over the line for a try. And now they lead 45 nothing. With a kick to come. It's 
just too easy for the Navy now. Every time they push forward, they look like scoring, and every time they push forward, they want to score. This kick will be taken by Mitch Walton as well. He scored a try today. And meanwhile, Eugene Connolly is being subbed on. It's Dom Morris, the player, to come off. And Mitch Walton, the player, to try and convert and get an extra two points on the board. The Navy currently lead 45-0. The kick is good. The flag goes up. And the Navy now lead 45 points. 47 points to nothing with 19 minutes to go in the game. We've played an hour here at Viking Park and it's just been an hour of non-stop Navy attack. They lead 47 to nothing against the Air Force. And the kick has gone straight out on the full. So nothing seems to really be going right for the Air Force right now. It's a scrum, Navy to feed, right on the halfway line. Scrum is Fred, comes out to him, passes a poor one, but goes to a player anyway. They have space down the outside on the right. It's George Cantacaris that was taken down and he looked like he'd still be able to go but comes away for an Air Force ball. So if you've just joined us, it's the Australian Defence Force Championship Series here live on Bar TV Sports. This game is between the Navy men and the Air Force men. The Navy men currently leading the Air Force men 47 points to nothing. We'll be back here on, a, on Wednesday as the Army men and the Army women take on the Air Force men, the Air Force women here at Viking Park. That's on Wednesday from 1.30 for the women's game and 3.30 for the men's game. Air Force take the scrum. Look for a chip ball. It's taken by Harry Hayne who breaks away from one challenge, gives the ball to Tamsana, and Tamsana is tackled. Navy push forward with another attack again. Eugene Connolly barging forward. Gains a good few metres. It's a decent tackle there from the Air Force. Navy look like they're about to attack the right-hand side. They just made one pass to the right before Lachlan Taylor was tackled. They do now, and they give the ball. It looks like it's Jacob Morrill on the ball, and he's taken down just before he can score, but it looks like they'll get another chance to score through George Cantacoris, who puts the ball down. He had Zeb Leroy to his right. He didn't need him, George Cantacoris, who makes it 52 nothing. They've broken the half century. Good play there from the Navy, who were denied thanks to some last-ditch defending, but they're also the quickest to react and got the ball back down that right-hand side to put it down for a try. 52 nothing, the Navy lead, the kick to come and make it 54. Mitch Walton will be the man who takes the kick. 
He's had two to take earlier in this game, one from each side, both of which have hit the mark. A very, very strong kicking game from both uh, both Corey Lee, who's taking them in the first half, and Mitch Walton, who's taking them now. Mitch Walton has a look. One last look. And his kick is good again. Deceivingly good. That was straight down the middle. Kind of made a little bit of an S turn, like he's kicking a soccer ball. Navy lead 54 0. Air Force have under 15 minutes to get something on the board. Some of the Navy players making it very clear they don't want that to happen. They're calling for a strong defense. Oh, well, that's very, very well taken there by Jacob Morrill, who very nearly scored just before. He makes a great run before he's eventually tackled. And it's Scott Hogan who breaks, opts to take a kick. And, oh, he's, he's just cramped up before he can get back onto the ball. And he looks like he's about to walk off the pitch. That's disappointing. He's putting his hands up. He's saying he's about to come off. He looks like he's torn his hamstring. Meanwhile, Navy attack down the right-hand side and get the ball over for another try. That's George Kentuckerus again. That's his second try. Second try in a row. And the Navy now lead 59 points to nothing. But that's going to be somewhat... Uh, Somewhat stained by the fact that uh, it was. Who was it that's come off? So Mitch Walton's had a perfect kicking game so far. Has a chance to put Navy up by over 60. Looking to double their score from the last time. So it was Scott Hogan who, uh, who made the initial good run. That chip ball over the top. He was chasing it. He looked like he might get there too, but he just pulled up. He's holding his hamstring. It... Hopefully it's just a bit of a cramp or a minor tear and it's nothing too serious. He is able to still walk off the pitch. He really does seem to be in some pain. Didn't matter though in terms of getting the try in the end. George Cantankerous who gets his, gets his second and Mitch Walton looks to extend the lead even further and get them up over 60 points. 12 minutes to go in the game and the kick comes off the post. It's his first miss. Navy lead 59 points to nothing. They scored 33 in the first. They've scored 26 so far in the second. 12 minutes to go. High kickoff. Taken well by Jacob Morrill. He's tackled strongly. It's been a while since we've seen a penalty. and The flow of this game's been going along quite nicely, especially for the Navy. Air Force did have that one chance to score, but a disappointing forward pass right where it mattered most denied them. It doesn't, at this stage, look like they're going to get anything on the board. The Navy are making it very clear they don't want, it, they don't want them to. And Navy get a penalty. And they will kick for touch through fly half, John T. Hertzfield. Oh, sorry, it's a scrum. It's a scrum. Navy to feed. John T will be the one who feeds it. <laughs> 
Scrum's fed. Eventually comes back out to him. They attack down the left-hand side. And they're still going. Some good meters made there. And Air Force trying to keep their defensive structure. Ball's kicked up field. Emerson Burgess is taken down. Great tackling there by the Navy. They're not giving them any space. They didn't give them any space in the first half. Gave them a little bit of space in the second, but Air Force couldn't capitalize. And now, but that's much better from the Air Force. And a brilliant cutout pass there. Looks to chip it up over the player. But the bounce is very, very kind for, uh, for Harry Hibbs, who has also positioned himself very nicely as well to ensure that he couldn't be chipped and chased. And then Navy come away with the ball and kick the ball downfield. Emerson Burgess shrugs off one player but slips. Ball's out. And a big kick by Dominic Chamberlain. Will be picked up by Eddie Tomsana. He looks to pass. Ops to go himself. Just under 10 minutes, under nine minutes to go here in this game. The Navy lead the Air Force, 59 points to nothing. We'll be back here at Viking Park on Wednesday as the Army men take on the Air Force men at 3.30. Before that, at 1.30, the Army women take on the Air Force women. Air Force women coming off a win. Air Force men, if they want to beat the Army men, will need to put in a much better performance than they have here. Eight minutes to go here live on Bar TV Sports from Viking Park. The score is Navy 59, Air Force nothing. Drop below 10 degrees here today at Viking Park. It's a bit of a chilly afternoon. It's probably about eight degrees at the moment. Oh, he couldn't pick the ball up off the scrum, and it breaks for the Navy. And that's a great run there by Lachlan Taylor, the flanker. He's an able seaman for the Navy. They run down the right-hand side. They've got the numbers advantage. He opts to go himself. Eventually cuts inside to Mitch Walton, who will put it down right under the post, and he'll most, like, he'll most likely be the man taking the kick as well, so he'll hopefully get to convert his own try. Mitch Walton makes it 64 nothing to the Navy. And if he can convert this kick from right in front, which you put your house on it, then the Navy has scored the same amount of points in the second half than they have in the first half. They may be able to outdo themselves in this second half. Didn't look like they were going to early on, but just this flurry of attack now, attack after attack after attack, wave after wave. And they seem to score every time. It all started off with some brilliant running from uh, Lachlan Taylor, the flanker. Every time they tackled, they just released the ball so quickly. Eventually attacking down the right-hand side. It was uh, Peter Taylor who had lots of plays to his right, opted to go himself, eventually cut inside, and uh, Mitch Walton gets the try. Another one for today, and another conversion for today. The Navy lead... 66 points to nothing against the Air Force. They scored 33 in the first half. They've now scored 33 in the second. And there's about six minutes left to play. So yet another kick by Dominic Chamberlain. He goes high. A lot more pressure this time from the Air Force. Who almost win the ball and... It belongs to the Navy, even if the Air Force would have picked that up. It was a bit of a knock on there. Oh. 
Harry Hay. Harry Hibbs can't can't hold on to it. He knocks the ball on. We haven't seen that very often from him. He's been wonderful all game, solid. It's his first mistake. And with five minutes to go, it's going to be a scrum Air Force feed and a chance for them to hopefully get something on the board. If they're desperate enough to get something on the board, maybe they'll just go for a field kick. Get those three points from the field goal. It's better than nothing. Although they want to try. Mitch Egan going to feed the scrum. Comes back out to him. They attack down the right-hand side. They have space down the right-hand side. Uh, it's a very, very good tackle there. And he forces him to drop the ball in the tackle. Strong defending from the Navy. Air Force just can't get anything back from them. It's a scrum Air Force feed. Sorry, Navy feed. Very, very strong defending from the Navy. And desperate to keep a clean sheet. They're protecting that zero like it's their baby at the moment. And there's still time for them to get even more points up on the board. Currently leads 66 nothing. Half time score was 33 nothing. So they haven't quite outdone themselves in the second half. Not yet. But the quality of the tries have been a bit better. Once again, that's another decent run from Lachlan Taylor. He's always managed to beat one or two before he's taken down. That's a big kick. Bounces an awkward one for Emerson Burgess. He waits for it to stop before picking it up. He's got three players on him. A couple of players have finally come in to help. And the ball breaks for the army and... It was Thomas Hiramatsu. He looked like he was about to be taken out of play. He manages to get the ball away instead and... Air Force get away with it. Three minutes to go here in the, in the second half. Three minutes to go in the game. And it's going to be a scrum Air Force feed. Three minutes for the Air Force to get something out of this game, anything. Navy have just been completely all over them the whole time. One or two good opportunities for the Air Force. That one that sticks out was when they were through on... Had a clear view of the try line, but that final pass was forward. Very, very disappointing. But in a way, that's kind of summed up their day. Not much has seemed to go for them. The kicking hasn't been great. Whereas the Navy have been sharp all around. Mitchell Egan to feed the scrum. Two and a half minutes left to play here at Viking Park, live on Bar TV Sports. And it's going to be taken again. He's still on his feet. Does very well. Eventually he's taken down by three men. And it's an Air Force penalty. Minute and a half to go. They will kick for touch. They're going to have to kick deep. They do. Line out from about halfway inside of the Navy's half. And they have a minute and 20 seconds to get something out of this game, the Air Force. Just one minute left in the game. Could be the last chance that yeah, the Air Force get to get something out of it. Well, and they're not going to get anything out of the line out like that. That's poor. The ball breaks the Navy. Who attack down the right-hand side. 
Manchester release. Air Force get the ball back. They will get another chance to attack. 40 seconds left in the game here live on Bar TV Sports from Viking Park. We'll be back here at Viking Park on Wednesday as the Army and the Air Force take each other on another doubleheader. At 1.30, the Army women take on the Air Force women. At uh, 3.30, the Air Force men will be back here playing the Army men. That's on Wednesday. And then on Saturday, we're at the Gingalan Enclosed Oval for the Community Day. Lots of games, lots of events, a marching band. Bring the kids along, get to meet the Brumbies as well. It's a cheeky chip there. and it Kicked out. And this will be the last play of the game. So one more chance for the Air Force to get something out of this game. One last play, one last chance. There's no time left. A barging run from Nick Williams. They attack the right-hand side. Isaac Neep is tackled. He gets the ball out. They attack the left-hand side now through Logan Morley. Still the Air Force push forward. Andrew O'Toole. He can't break the line of defense. And the decision is a penalty for the Air Force, who up to tap. Someone from the bench will call for them to take the, uh, take the points, but they're going, they want to try. They don't just want to score. They want to score a try. And that's a decent run there, all the way by Isaac Neep. And the awful Air Force celebrate that one like they've just won the game. A wonderful moment from them. They're very happy. The Navy were desperate to keep that clean sheet, to keep that zero. And they just couldn't. Isaac Neep scrambles over the line. And the Air Force restore some pride, get some points on the board. Score is 66-5 in favour of the Navy. And there's still a chance to get two more up on the board as well. It's going to be Brady Cochran to take the kick. Score is 66-5. If he can get this between the posts, he can make it 66-7. Brady Cochran to take the kick. The kick is wide. And he just has a bit of a laugh. That's the end of this game. A dominant performance from the Navy against the Air Force. The, uh, it was the uh, Air Force women that beat the Navy women earlier in the game. But that didn't translate for the men's game as the Navy completely dominate the Air Force. The final score here at Viking Park is Navy 66, Air Force 5. And don't forget that we'll be back here at Viking Park on Wednesday, Wednesday the 15th of May, as the Army women take on the Air Force women at 1.30, the Army men take on the Air Force men at 3.30, and then on Saturday, it's the final day of the uh, Championships and Community Day. It's the main day next Saturday, starting at 9.20 in the morning from Gingarland on the other side of town. The Air Force women take on the police women, and then the Air Force men take on the police men. There'll also be a classic uh, ADF rugby union team against the classic Wallabies and Brumbies. So that should be a cracker. Come along to that. At halftime, we'll see some games between Tuggeranong and Ngallan. And uh, during that, the current Brumbies will be meeting the fans throughout the entire game. At 1 o'clock, there'll be a marching band presentation from the Royal Military College. And then at 1.30, the Navy women take on the Army women. And then the final game at 3.30, the Navy men, who have been completely dominant here, take on the Army men. So make sure that you... Come along to that if you can and you're in Canberra. Or if not, you can join us live on Bar TV Sports. That's on Saturday at Gingarland. And we'll see you back here on Wednesday at Viking Park from 1.30. The final score, once again, Navy 66, Air Force 5.